Next, tragedy strikes, accidents happen. Be there when the calls come in. It's back-to-back -back episodes of Rescue 911. Next on Discovery Health Channel. Then, witness a 10-year-old's frightening encounter with an unknown intruder on the next Rescue 911. This is 911. Do you have any emergency? As a parent, there's nothing more frightening than knowing your child's in danger, and there's nothing you can do to help. For George and Vicki O'Brien of Beaverton, Oregon, that moment came on January 14th, 1989. The O'Brien's oldest daughter had to cancel her babysitting job at the last minute, but their middle daughter, 10-year-old Kelly, offered to fill in. Bye, sweetheart. Okay. Kelly's a very good babysitter. We've always felt very comfortable with the job that she would do. And it was in the afternoon, too, and we didn't feel any alarm or worry about sending her out. Mary Willis picked up Kelly and drove her the three miles to the Willis's house. We felt like we'd lived in a safe place. Oh, hi, Tom. Hi, Tommy. How are you doing, Kelly? She had been babysitting for us for a number of times, so there wasn't too much to orient her to, just explain what Comey had eaten and put him down for a nap about 1 or 1.30. With that, we left the apartment. I'm going to lock you in, so you go ahead and just throw the latch. I will. Bye-bye. Want to go play with me, Jason? I know we deadbolted the door with the key from the outside. Paint that for me. Are you tired, Comey? Come on, let's go take me off. Around 2 p.m., Kelly took two-year-old Comey upstairs for his afternoon nap. Sheriff's deputy, Dwayne Fuquay, recalls what happened next. Apparently, an individual had driven up in front of the duplex looking at a young girl that was inside the duplex. I believe she was 10 years old. She saw this individual in a car looking at her or staring at her. She moved out of line of sight of the individual in the car. He moved the car so that he could continue to watch and possibly see her again. At about the same time that this was happening out front, someone was knocking, another unknown, knocking on the back door or a back window of the duplex. What do you want? The individual in the back of the house continued to knock and bang on the door. 911, please fire medical. I'm in, 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 I'm in. She was talking so quickly and yelling that I could hardly understand anything she'd said. Okay, are you alone? Yes. What's the address there? She was in a situation where she didn't know where she was. So we immediately began a trace, which normally takes approximately eight minutes. In eight minutes, we're talking the difference between life and death. What's your phone number there? I don't know. Can you look at the phone and look? It's just okay. She didn't have information enough for me to start police over there. Calm down, Kelly. 
Sally, try and come down. Whose house are you at? Um, is it a friend of yours? Yes. Okay, are they babysitting you? No, I'm babysitting their child. Okay, and someone's come to the door and you won't let them in. Is the door locked? Yes. I felt that they were there to possibly kidnap the child that was upstairs or possibly do harm to Kelly. Kelly, do you know the address where your parents are? Yeah, but I'm maybe sitting for somebody else. Not okay, okay, that's all right. What's your parents' phone number? 649. 60. Okay, stay. Hold on, Kelly. We realized that possibly we might be able to help her faster if we called her parents. What's the address where she is? As we tried to figure out where she was and then to find exactly the address. Yeah, I don't have the exact address, ma'am. I'm sorry. My mind became a little confused. I knew the directions to their place. I knew their first names. I could go there in a minute. Uh, I did not know their phone number. I did not know their address. I did not know their last name. Okay, Kelly, everything's okay there. We're still trying to find out where you're at. We needed to have police sent at least to the area where she was at. The dispatchers passed Kelly's father's directions on to Deputy Fuquay. They were all he had to go on. You think about what can happen to this young girl when we did not know where she was exactly, but we knew that there was a small child in trouble. Um, I was concerned and trying to get there as fast as <clears throat> you want to do something to know that you can help. We pull out the phone directory, we start thumbing through that, looking for the names of our friends who live next to them. Without an enhanced 911 system, the dispatchers could not get Kelly's address automatically. somewhere between the marvels of modern medicine and the pure power of the human spirit. Going up was easy, coming down was easy, so it didn't stop to bother me. Impact Stories of Survival. It's Monday night at 8 on Discovery Health Channel. You always wonder, is this going to be another statistic? Is it going to be another tragic situation? You run through the, the gamut of emotions, you run through the entire realm of what could happen as you're trying to get to the, the location as quick as possible. Is he still out there? The man in the car is in, but I think the guy at the door is because it keeps on knocking. Did you tell him to go away? Yes, I said, please go away, you're scaring me. He kept on knocking. I just saw the police car. Okay, you see the police car? Yes. Okay, calm down, Kelly. Okay, stay on the line. I'll tell you when to go to the door, all right? Yeah, I just drove by my back with the car used to be. Where the car used to be? The car's gone now? Yeah, the car's gone, but the man sounds, sounds like there's no somebody there, but I'm not sure. Sounds like somebody still might be out front. Not finding the suspect vehicle. We did an area check. The scene was, was safe and secure. Let's the door lock again. Hello, Matt? Okay, Kelly? Kelly? Yes? You can go to the door. It's the policeman, okay? Okay. Yes. Go ahead and go. I'll stay on the phone for you. Are you sure? Sir? Yeah, I'm going to stay on the phone. You go ahead and go to the door. It's the policeman. I felt relieved that I knew that Kelly was safe. Okay, Kelly. I'll go ahead and say goodbye, all right? Okay. I'm extremely proud of Kelly. I think she did a remarkable job for a 10-year-old. She's real sharp. She's very sharp. She dialed 911, did the right thing. You'd like to think that all 
young children would respond the same way, but in fact, they don't. Hi. She's okay. She's Hi. Fine. You okay? She just gave me a big hug, and that was about all she could muster at that point. To have her safe again, that to me was, was the peak of the happy ending. My advice to other children that are babysitting is to always have the name and address of the people you're babysitting for and to lock the door. <laughs> Kelly is definitely responsible for saving Comey's life. Had she opened the door and someone got in, they could have been beaten up, they could have been kidnapped, they could have been killed. I hope I've been able to express to Kelly how grateful I am to her. Um, we are. We're extremely grateful to Kelly for saving Comey's life. Next, step inside the command center where the calls for help are answered and meet the real-life heroes who save lives. Stay tuned for another episode of Rescue 911. Next on Discovery Health Channel. Real life. Medicine. Miracles. Mr. Shapiro, step out of the car, please.